Hi, yeah, it's uh, Xavier, and uh, and welcome to my essential guide stroke bonsai calendar. Today, we're going to be talking about Japanese maple. So, if you want to learn more about what I know, then you need to follow along for the next five or six minutes, because I'm sure that you're going to get some useful tips, if not anything more than some key dates that you need to get in your diary. Okay, I accept most of us know a lot about Japanese maple because they're the variety we go for most. I mean, look at this, fall colors, absolutely incredible. Got a little mame one there, that, that's now seven, eight years old. And this old, uh, old master that I'm trying to repair after loads and loads of damage. Both of these you can see in videos if you look on my Japanese maple bonsai playlist, which will be in the description at the end. Japanese maple, hundreds and hundreds of cultivars. Region-wise, you can get them most places, but they do prefer sort of semi-shade or what they call indirect light. So for me, I'll have my maples positioned uh, in the morning sunlight, but certainly they avoid anywhere near after lunchtime when you can get the heat of the summer, even in England. And also wind. Oh my goodness, they, uh, they love wind nearly as much as I do. They have these lovely fine leaves, which we love, and the wind loves to rip them to pieces. And we've all had maple with uh, wind burn. I suppose they're an Asian uh, variety for Japan, Korea, China. The Acer palmatum, which is the ones that are in front of you now, uh, are the most common. So when do I repot these? Uh, with a lot of our deciduous trees, best time to repot is in the spring. And we're looking for the point when uh, the buds have swelled and are probably just starting to open up, push out. I have repotted earlier, but the risk you face, certainly in this country, is that um, England loves to throw a, uh, a, second, uh, a second winter, a couple of weeks after we get loads of bud burst. That can set the tree back. And if you've also added, that, added to that a repot, then you can really severely hamper your tree. And quite happy with these, wash the roots out. Soil can often be a bit of a, uh, a sticky subject in this fine community we have. And I'll stress again, I've had these things in all sorts, but there is a point you reach where the inorganic um, akadamas serve a, a really decent purpose. And that's when they get start getting to really ramified trees. Now I could start spouting on about Akadama and the advantages and benefits it has for greater ramification of roots and stuff like that, but truthfully, my stuff isn't good enough. Pruning? Well, it's throughout the growing season, which we count really from, from April right through to, uh, to the sort of midsummer, I suppose. And often what we'll be doing is cutting back to, to two leaves and doing that throughout to keep the profile of the tree, certainly if it's a finished tree. Um, now what I'm going to talk about is what I do and I treat my tridents the same way. Spring comes along, I'll let them flush right out until we get to, to sort of mid-May. Then I'll do what's called post-flush hardened pruning. And that means the tree has now restored all the energy back into its, uh, its roots and all its juices in the right place. And it's saying to you, do you know what, I've got the energy to send out another flush of growth. At that point is when I'll go in and I'll cut right back to the buds that I want to get the smaller, more refined, smaller internode pushed from. Now you will have definitely heard of pinching of uh, new shoots and that occurs with that first flush as the first set of leaves have opened up then immediately you see a small, small flush of the, the second set. You pinch those out. I did it years and years back on a totally undeveloped tree and it had horrendous effects. It basically put the tree back ages. The key here is that you need to have a ramified tree or a completed branch where you're not looking at large growth, you're looking at trying to keep the growth, the internode distance and the structure very tight and compact. If I'm looking to develop a branch then, as the rules with all the trees, I'll let the shoot continue to run until it's the thickness I want or until it's aided the healing that I want or it's achieved that aim that I wanted. And then we'll come to the next stage of pruning, which for me will be right through to leaf fall. That's when I'll do major branch, rem branch work, branch removal. Now we can also do either a partial or a full defoliation. 
I've shied away from the full defoliation the last few years. Um, I found it, it put my tree back too far and I didn't get the results out of it that I really wanted to achieve, which is a smaller, a smaller flush to come through. So what I'll do is a partial defoliation. I'll do that around the midsummer time. We've had the post flush hardens happened. We've had the next flush come out. That's when I'll normally remove one in two of the leaves. Uh, often it'll be the bigger leaves that are outside and that'll also allow light to come inside the tree and to, to give energy to those smaller growth that often get shaded out. Uh, and that's one of the big things you want because you want to get that tight, lovely ramified growth inside closer to the main trunk. And I'll also do leaf cutting and that's where I've demonstrated where I hold the leaves in half or on maples you actually cut all the tips off. That's another way of encouraging the tree to push out uh, a smaller growth. But it needs to be healthy and ideally you really don't want to have repotted it that year. As a rule I only ever do it once every two to three years because as you can imagine it takes a tree um, a good few years really to, to get enough energy positive that it can then do it again. The main time for me for pruning both the uh, Japanese maple and trident maple is at uh, leaf fall. That can either be you know the last week or so in October which happened in 23 or as in happened in 22 it was as uh, middle of November and you're looking for the point where you know a good half of the leaves have turned colour starting to fall and, and this tree is probably an example of it now and I could remove and I'll remove all these leaves and I could go to town and prune this quite hard I could take off quite thick branches if I wanted to seal them off and so long it's healthy the tree will do fine and this is when I'll do all my selection for next spring, knowing that I won't prune next spring. And that'll extend for about two to three weeks afterwards. I suppose the only thing I will say is that um, there's a lot of um, discussion about not doing any pruning in the spring because they bleed a lot. I'm bleeding! <laughs> and uh, some varieties bleed more than others and there's a suggestion that if you cut them they'll bleed so much that they'll go unhealthy and stuff like that. Or it wastes the energy or things like that. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Me, um, I've done both. I just find I prefer doing the pruning in the autumn, mainly because I've got so many trees. Wiring, you can do that through a lot of the year. The, the main issue you've got to bear in mind when you wire is, one, can you see the wire? Because once these things start throwing out a leaf, you know with maples they have got a very, very thick canopy. And uh, trying to see where the wire is in the, uh, in the middle of May or June can be... Uh, difficult at the best of times. So I will do my wiring normally again at that leaf drop period if I'm going to, uh, knowing full well that it'll have that whole period where there's nothing on the branch so I can see the line, I can see the buds that I'm aiming for and do the, uh, the sort of shaping and bending that I want. It also means that come the springtime normally they've set in position and I can take the wire off. Risk with spring is that although you can see the buds that are pushing and you get a better clearer idea of what branches have made it so you do, your wiring is certainly uh, more directive there's a risk of rubbing off buds and also you've got to be very aware if you've got a very healthy maple and it throws out loads of growth that wire could be coming off again in four weeks four weeks later as for propagation whew, air layers brilliant never have a problem with air layers always do those again around that post flush harden so you're looking middle middle to end of May. I know people have done it earlier with success. I always do it around that sort of, around about May the, May the 22nd, 23rd. We pretty well got spring out of the way. And uh, I'll leave the bag on for three months basically. And yep, they can be taken off earlier, but I like taking them off somewhere around sort of mid-September. And normally 80, 90% success with maples on air layers. Cuttings with maples are, sometimes I say some year they all take, and then I can go two or three years where I don't get any to take. The best time I've found is around the, uh, the May, May time, when the newer growth has just started to harden off. Um, I've tried other periods and really struggle. Last year I tried hardwood cuttings and it was an absolute dismal failure. And I suppose the only other thing we want to know about is pests, and maples do have a few, certainly. Green fly, black fly, you'll know you've got them because the, uh, the ant colony will suddenly start pouring its way up the tree. Mm. I got ants all over my neck. Trying to trap these uh, lovely tasty morsels at the ends of the branches. They'll suck the life out of your tree, 
you'll see that it, they're absolutely devastating to, a, to a, um, a leaf crop on a maple. So soapy, uh, I use a soapy water oil type mix, spray it all on there and that normally works well. If you go to the local nursery or online you can always find a, uh, a common, commonly used spray that works fine. But definitely, I stay on top of that and I'm spraying these normally every two weeks because the infestations just come on so quickly. Once the leaves are dropped, coming into mid-November, uh, late November, I'll apply a, um, a winter wash. So that's my um, hopefully quick guide on how I deal with Japanese maples and trident maples. Best time for doing the general purpose stuff. If you've got any questions, drop a comment in the uh, comment section. Uh, or send me a, an email at expressionsbonsai at gmail.com and I'll do my best to answer it. I've been growing Japanese maples um, for quite a while so I've had a lot of experience with them locally in Grantham and I said Grantham is I think it comes under 9b in terms of its environment or whatever that means so you know our lowest lowest winter temperatures are minus five for a few days at a time these things will freeze up and our highest temperatures couple of days at 28, 29, maybe we'll get a odd 31, 32. Um, wind is our biggest problem. Best bit of stuff about maple, if you've got a maple and you're removing a big branch, it makes the most incredible sparkler for bonfire night. The Japanese maple sparkler, what do you reckon everybody? And if you don't know what bonfire night is, and have a look up there at uh, my bonfire specials. It's normally when I parade my dead trees. If there's anything I've missed or you think I've completely misrepresented, then please make sure you tell me. Because if people watch this, hopefully they're looking in the comments. There's a lot of varied opinions and this is just from my experience. And I'm only doing on trees which I've got good experience of. Anyway, if you like this, please hit the like button. If you uh, think someone will benefit, then of course, share it to other people on social media. If you wanna know about future stuff I'm doing, then you've gotta hit the bell notifications. And if you haven't subscribed, and you've watched to this point, then do you know what? I think you ought to subscribe because it'll make me feel good. And making me feel good is gonna make you feel good. So it's a win-win, isn't it? Anyway, from Xavier, thinking I'm getting a bit hungry. I say thanks very much for watching. All the best, God bless. Happy bonsaiing. Cheers.